Hello and welcome to another video for One Loose Sprocket. Today what we're going to look at is the Shimano 6-speed freewheel and the plan is to take it apart and confirm that the internal working mechanism is okay and repack bearings, lubricate, clean, clean all that good stuff, overhaul it and go ahead and put it back together. When I spin it a little bit, you can tell there's it, it spins okay, but there is some grittiness, and I'm sure that the grease has dried out because it's been not just a couple years, but a couple decades since this thing has been used, probably. So there's definitely some some years that an abuse that have been done, and we need to go ahead and confirm that this it's not bad on the inside. So. To start with, I will go ahead and tap off the lock ring that holds the internal mechanism together and it will expose by taking, it is a, it is a left handed thread too, I should mention. And when you take this out, it will expose the, the bearings on the inside, the, because it's, it has a, there's a bearing race on the top, there's a bearing race on the bottom. So this exposes those bearings here, and you can see them as they're, uh, and yeah, it's, it's definitely needs some, some work. Yeah, they're definitely not greasy. Well, it's, there's dried grease, but there's not some good grease. So I'll go ahead and put the bearings as best I can into my solvent here, and go ahead and start to take the rest of it apart. I mean, I, I try to hold it up, you can see that they all fall out. They're little 1 8 inch. Uh, bearings and they're not they're pretty small and they 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 roll really good and they get away from me very fast so that's why i buy a bunch of extras just in case or take other free wheels apart to get get those bearings as well but for the most part i just have a bunch of extras so i just dump in what i can and pick up the rest with a my, my little handheld magnet just get them out of the way you can even see i i even missed one here there and down in the corner that i didn't see first so let me go ahead and then I'm gonna clean this up and get those things soaking a little bit. And with my two chain whips, I'll go ahead and take off the, the threaded sprocket, which is the small one. And it is a right-handed thread. That's the one that has the, that keeps everything to, on, the, on the hub itself, the hub of the freewheel. So I go ahead and take off all the, all the individual sprockets as well as the spacers and they're all stuck together of course so I had to kind of pry them apart pretty much and definitely there's a lot of junk and and dirt and and debris dried grease I mean this thing has been like this probably a good I could say probably a good 20 years there was a little bit of rust on the actual outer housing of the hub itself but my Dremel tool and a little bit of, of steel wool as well as my my always present mineral spirits and gas mixture solvent does a great job of kind of cleaning that up and getting some of that stuff off of there wire brush of course is my other my other good one for using on this type of stuff especially to get down in the cracks where the steel wool it's a little bit difficult to do that so once i have it all cleaned up then i go ahead and just Take off all the little pieces that might be you know, just the, ins the inside of the hub. Just make sure that's nice and clean. There's nothing there that shouldn't be there, and there's no there are no problems that I can that I can immediately note where I'd have to say, you know what, this is not going to be worth trying to sal salvage. But for what I saw there, it looked really good. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary or that was going to be a deal breaker for as far as doing this whole thing. And I then started to take out the, I, I started working on the small sprocket. And once I started to take, to clean it up, I realized that <laughs> this was actually a high quality freewheel because I just could not see it because of all the, uh, all the junk on there. But once I started to clean it up with my solvent and getting all the stuff off of it, it actually was re in really good condition. It just was hidden so much. I mean, there were, none of the teeth were broken, bent, uh, worn, nothing like that. They were, it, it, there was, it wasn't even scratched really. It was, it was in such good condition 
that I was I was slightly amazed at the fact that it was looking so good. So I just went through e and each one I, as I went from the small sprocket to the to the larger one and just up the up the line here, going through each one, and I'm seeing each one look just the same as the first, and there was no no difference in the quality. And that's why Shimano at the time back in the in the like say the late 80s and the early 90s and stuff like that, that was their heyday. They really were a an, an excellent company, and they they still are. I'm not, I'm not going to say they are not. But there's a there's been some changes, and that's probably a conversation for some other day. But uh, looking at them, like I say, I looked at each one of the sprockets, and they were just just fantastic, just really good, clean, uh, well cleaner as I was cleaning them up, obviously. But uh, <laughs> but they were they were coming clean, and I was not seeing any problems there, so I knew that this was going to be a nice uh, re restoration project as I as I completed this here. I cleaned up the spacers. They had a little bit of rust and dirt on them as well. But again, even though they were just plastic spacers, I just went ahead and cleaned those up a little bit with some of the, the my rag with the, sol the solvent on it. And uh, it didn't it didn't take too much to get those cleaned. Uh, once I had most of them cleaned up, I just went ahead and put them in order with the correct spacers and stuff like that. Whatever the, the, the you know each one and and just kind of keep myself. Uh, organized I didn't have to think which one goes where and put those on the side and then I started going and then we're going to the actual assembly so the first thing I did was to take my blunt end syringe with my grease and went ahead and put in a nice nice line of bead a nice bead of, of grease there and then went ahead and started to add the individual bearings and I have, you know, my little pointer thing has, uh, it's, it's slightly magnetic, so it's, it's easier to do. I, I try to be very cautious to make sure that I don't miss anything because I don't want to leave any gaps. And that could be problematic later on. And like I said, I have no idea how many I actually lost, but I knew that I, I just wanted to put as many as I, I should on that bottom race. Then I went ahead and started on the pulls and, and adding those pulls in there, which of course makes the ratcheting sound, which you can you can hear very clearly when this thing is 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 freewheeling, as they call it, as it's freewheeling on the sprocket, you know, the sprocket when it's on the wheel itself. And I just went ahead and put that retaining ring or, or clip in there to hold the pulls there. And then with some white lightning wet ride, which is basically just a lubricant. I went ahead and, and oiled those up. It's, it's not a good idea to put the, the grease in there because that can actually get gummed up a little bit. So it's better to put an actual an actual lubricant that is, is a little bit more liquid so it, it, it can flow a little bit better and doesn't doesn't gum up that, that paw because otherwise you, you could actually get it stuck in, in the closed position and then your free wheel becomes a, a, a completely free wheel as it, it spins freely in both directions. And we obviously don't want that. So I went ahead and put the put those slip rings on there. I, again, put a little bit of wet right on there as well. And then I went ahead and put the outer housing on. I went ahead and put the my my free wheel remover tool on the back end as well to keep that from from coming off. I didn't want to lose now all of those bearings that I just put inside and keep I want to keep everything nice and clean there. Um, then I went ahead and put another bead of grease on the inside of the race, which is right around where it would accommodate the, the second set of bearings. And it's more than anything at first just to hold them in place. And as you can see, I'm just, just by, one by one, two by two, just going ahead and taking those, those bearings, and just dropping them in there because it's, it's a lot easier when you have a, it has a nice channel. And I just went ahead and accommodated each one in the correct location. They should be pressed up against the back of the, you know, the outside uh, cup of that, the bearing cup there. And then I went ahead and grabbed some additional bearings, of course, that were missing, just to make sure there was a complete set all the way around. Then went ahead and added some more grease on top of that, made sure that was well lubricated with grease before I went ahead and put the, the lock ring on. And of course, left-handed threads. So I'm going to rotate it to the left to tighten it. And I went ahead and put a little bit more, just a little bit of, of the of the wet wet right in there, the lubricant. Then just tap it in place with my punch. And once I had that set to my liking, 
Then I started in on actually putting a, a slight, just the, the smallest film of grease around the outside of the, the housing, the free will housing itself. And then went ahead and started adding on the sprockets and the spacers and stuff like that. And of course, they, it, it is keyed in one way. You cannot put these sprockets on backwards. They have to go in the direct location, the direct orientation, the correct orientation, I should say. And you do need to, and what I do typically is I'll line up all the teeth numbering because they'll stamp the numbers on the, how many teeth there are on each one of the sprockets. I can align those up just to kind of give myself a, just something to, to guide, kind of guide, not just throw them on any old way. Then once I had them all on there, I took the last one. And before I put that on there, I went ahead and put a little more grease there as well, just to, to put something on the thread, keep them in a place and make sure that it would, it would go on. Now this one, of course, was a right-handed thread. So I want to make sure I put that on the right way. And, you know, lefty loosey, righty tidy, but this is only for this. So I'm going ahead and I held the, the free will tool underneath uh, with my adjustable wrench. And then with my, my chain whip, I went ahead and tightened it down. So once I did that, it spun fantastic. It was such a, such a good feeling to hear that thing spinning the way it, it should be. That's really it. So here's my before and my after. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and there will be more videos on the way. Until the next video.